we would go and hang out with a good buddy of ours, Marty Barrett. Mm-hmm. And who was a porn, he was a, uh, a, a porn journalist journalist. Yeah. Yeah. And so he would write reviews. Um, he once, he once, um, gave me as a favor because I had done something nice for him. He gave me a huge box full of porn DVDs and he's like, here you go, man. Just, this is my way of saying thanks. And he goes, careful. One of them's gay. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Kite Club. We're here in the Kite Clubhouse with uh, my best friend, uh, Seth Shapiro, my producer, Paul Corey. Thank you so much for joining us again. You guys know the rules of Kite Club. First rule of Kite Club, tell everybody about Kite Club. Second rule of Kite Club, tell everybody about Kite Club. Third rule, like and subscribe. We're going to be on the road all summer long. Come see me. Um, I'm going to be at Tempe Improv June 29th through July 2nd. I'm going to be in San Diego May 10 and 11, and I'm going to be in Austin at the end of May. For all the dates and ticket info, go to jonathankitecomedy.com. Let's get into it. So Seth Shapiro is uh, my best friend. Uh, If you've ever come see me on the road before, he has opened for me for almost a decade and uh, was the best man at his wedding, and we have a couple timeshares together. Um, that we'd like to talk to you about a little later on in the show. Great I'll click the link below. Um, so, uh, how you doing? I'm good, man. I'm feeling great. Good, dude. Yeah. Couldn't be feeling better. Where really. were you this weekend? Oh, dude. I went to a fish concert this weekend, but let me be clear. Uh, let me be clear. Uh, I am. It was my first fish concert, which made me unique among this crowd of like thousands of people at the bowl. Uh, at the Hollywood Bowl, because everyone there has, you know, gone to see fish like 200 times. What drugs were you on? I, I can't talk about that on camera. I'm not going to. Th- I had nothing in my system, but the but the joy of life. Guys, we got him. Yeah. This is, we don't even what have a podcast. It's just, yeah, it's a narc situation. This I don't have a, a podcast. This has been an 11 episode setup. Amazing. You're surrounded with. This You're is watching also The a, Long Con with Jonathan Kite. Yeah, this is an intervention. Yeah, great. It's about um, time, really. Yeah, the people um, that love you are here. It's me and a producer you've never met. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah. Why yeah, does yeah. that have a guy have a badge? Yeah. yeah. Dude, yeah. Ashley. Uh, but uh, well, we, speaking of drugs, the calls. really crazy part of this uh subculture is that getting into the concert, uh, you know, they are checking everybody and dude, it was like No, gest- they're not. Gest- no, no, no. They were. Brother, it was Gestapo part two and the line took forever to get in because literally every single person had on their person you know, enough, enough drugs to start their own cartel. And dude, like the guy in front of us, he was this kid with a denim jacket and it took him over five minutes to go through the line because his jacket was made of pockets and every single pocket, the guy's like, all right, now please unzip that one. Now please open that one for me. And every pocket had its own joint in it. And the kid was like, oh man, like who hides, who uses a jacket that one joint per pocket? Yeah. right. That feels like, hello, that's what the ass is for. Yeah. Hello. That's what a pocket is for. All the joints. All the joints. How forgetful is this guy? He also I, had uh, dementia. Yeah. Where he's like, oh my God, I forgot. Wait, oh, here's, here's <laughs> it was where a, did I put that one joint? It was a surprise to him. But dude, there was a garbage can right next to that. He's thing. like, how did that get in there? <laughs> yeah. He didn't even remember that he was that he smoked weed. Yeah. He's like, I haven't done this in years. I thought. How many drug sniffing dogs were there? It's all the dr- all drug sniffing dogs. But dude, the garbage can. That was a great time to get drugs through LAX. When yeah. fish is in town, little side tip, I know nothing about it, but if you want to get drugs in and out of the city, do it when fish is in town. That's when I move. That's when them. I move. Yeah. But no, dude, the garbage can next to it where everything got thrown out, like there were no, it, it, it had all the drugs in the world in this garbage can. Like that garbage can was, had a better time at the concert than anyone who was at the concert. Dude, there's just some guy in there. <laughs> yeah. It's just Oscar the Grouch is just in there. I'll take it. Yeah. Dressed like a garbage can. Dude. No, seriously, what you need to do is what anyone. That's what yeah. you should have come dressed as. <laughs> yeah, garbage can. Yeah, just a garbage just can. Just put it in me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Thank you, Pee Wee's Playhouse garbage can. <laughs> <laughs> hey, garbagey. Uh, uh, heroin. But I was thinking, like, if anyone wants to, like, get their hands on a lot of drugs, just go to a fish concert. You don't need to buy a ticket because this is before you have to show your ticket. And just go to the garbage can and just wait until everyone goes through. Fish concerts have TSA. Yeah. They that really do, man. That is remarkable. It was insane. So you were, wait, you couldn't smoke weed in the Hollywood Bowl? Oh, believe me. Enough people got it in. People were no, no, open but I'm saying, I didn't know it. that you couldn't. I didn't either. That's the crazy thing. It's like, this is 2023. We're in LA. Why are you confiscating all this stuff? And I mean, people still got it in because like we, we went into the concert and, and every That's other person. That's what it was. Hollywood Bowl sold its own. Yeah. It's like bringing a, a food into a movie theater. Right. No, 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 buddy. Yeah. You're going to get Hollywood you have Bowl brand. That Hollywood, Hollywood Bowl. Bowl. Yeah, yeah, obviously. Exactly. And um, and they and they sell you the food with it. 
Right. That, they I mean, that would, exactly. Come yeah. on, guys. So that's part of the timeshare that we have going on. We'll talk about it a little <laughs> later in the program, just sort of get it out bit by bit. Um, that's pretty cool. Yeah, but it was fun, man. It was a good time, you know? It's like, I've never gone to see a jam band before. I don't know any fish. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I saw him. I don't even stand. know fish. I don't know fish. Listen, I don't know no fish. Okay, yeah. what did fish say about me? Because I don't know no fish. Yeah, um, I don't know. Go, you I are. don't know go filter fish. I don't know nothing. Uh, no, because Jeff, my cousin, used to travel around the country mm. and watch them play live. Yeah, that's what people do. Is like they, oh, dude, the, uh, the, this woman behind me who got to talking, and she was from my hometown, Glenview. She works in Glenview, where I'm from in Chicago, and she came out for the concert. It was crazy. How did that even come up? Uh, she was asking me where I was What's from. What's the secret password right. to get the drugs? Glad Glad you. Glad you, Illinois. Yeah. No, she asked me where I was from because I guess so many people there weren't from LA and they traveled in for the show. By the way, we talked about this last episode, mm-hmm. Paul and I. That's how you get the drugs in. You come dressed as a cop. <laughs> right. You come dressed yeah. as it. He goes, guys, this garbage can, we're, we're confiscating this. I'll take this. Oh, you, everyone at security, I'm sure, just had a field day with that garbage can. Oh, dude. Afterwards. None of them worked there. You had the evidence locker. Yeah. It was empty by the end of the show. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm going to need to have some of that Gatorade you have there, too, because that just looks good. Is that Jeff Bridges as a cop? <laughs> Come, <laughs> Come on, man. Empty your pockets, man. Come on, man. Dude, but seriously, this poor kid with the pockets, like, it was it was like a sketch. It was like a, a on a sketch show of how many he had. Like, it was like, and please, sir, open the pocket, and there's a pocket inside there. Please empty that pocket, sir. It was like that. It was crazy. i never been. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Jerry Springer passed away. Mm. Um I don't know, but his obituary <laughs> probably read something like Jerry Springer is not the father, but he is now the ghost and the Holy Spirit. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, what were his final words? What were his final words? See ya. <laughs> God was like, you are not being renewed. Uh, you've been canceled. Finally. Finally. You know, he was like, that was reality TV. In the early 90s, when you started in 91, that was reality TV before there was reality TV. What year did it go? 2018? Yeah, from 91 to 2018. But like, he proved that there was a market out there for people who wanted to watch people who were worse than them. Just oh, no, that's what it was. Wrecks. You feel bad about yourself? Turn on Jerry Springer. Yeah. And it was real. When you watch the earlier episodes, like Maury, they were a lot more violent. Because they were oh, actors yeah. in the later days. They, those were actors. When people knew the consequences where they d- did have lie detector tests and stuff like that, people didn't want to They didn't want to go on and get the shit kicked out of them by a significant other on public television what to other, then be, have a rerun of that. What other daytime talk show had to have security guards on set standing next to every guest? Montel Williams? No, Montel Jordan. Didn't the security One of the guards That's how they show. beat you. This is how we do it. <laughs> Um, wait, what did yeah. you say? Didn't the security guard get his own show? Yeah, Steve. Yeah. yeah, Steve. And they and they used to chant Jerry's name, which is like it never made any sense. Wait, he wasn't doing anything. No. He was just standing and watching. No, it was like for the Roman Emperor. Yeah, yeah. And they were just poking him. He was just poking the guests with a stick. I and mean, just trying I, yeah. to get him to do stuff. I can't believe. The funny thing was, like, he never offered any advice for these people. Right. Like at least Doctor Phil. He always had nonsense, sort of backwater, like, okay, yeah. here's the thing you gotta realize, okay? Um, the, the, uh, the, like the counselor yeah, from South Park. Cal- I was gonna say, he definitely is the inspiration for the counselor from yeah, South Park. Yeah. Okay, he's up there saying, hey, you know, if you might poke a bear, but unless you wanna be in West Hollywood, you gotta find one that wants to be poked back. We're gonna be back after these messages, <laughs> poke a bear. Um, that you gotta imagine, like, that is crazy. You know how good you have to be that your security guard gets a spinoff? Yeah. I mean, that's unbelievable. Wait, what was his name? Steve, Steve. what? No, no, but oh, what? I don't, I, you, Steve Bannon. <laughs> it was just a one word, Steve. St- like Cher. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like Jesus. He's the most famous Steve. He's the most famous security guard. I can't name another security guard. No. I'm trying to think of like if there was like an action movie about a security guard who became a spy, but I can't think I of it. I mean, any. the bodyguard. Kevin yeah. Costner. Oh, the bodyguard. The bodyguard. Oh, the? oh yummy. And you know what yeah. his name was in the bodyguard? Huh. Steve. Steve. Not Steve. <laughs> um, Steve Steveman. How was the how was the theme for Steve's bodyguard show not and I oh, will dude. always love you? Did They'll S- play that at his funeral. Did, oh. oh. Um is Steve is Steve <laughs> not suit enough? Did he do a, a final word? Steve? Yeah. Yeah, except like that guy was like such a caveman, it was literally just a word. <laughs> 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 Today's final word. Bye. No, he seemed like a nice, I mean, like a well enough guy. He does. No? Yeah. I just make a phone. He's a big muscle head, but I'm sure yeah. he's a sweetheart. Come on out, Steve. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> Just, what? He was Surprise also here for your intervention. He also thinks that you're. This is becoming a Springer episode. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the, well, the idea that it, here's the crazy thing is the only thing that people wanted to know, which I think 
you are not the father. I definitely feel like that's a Maury Povich thing. That's a Maury thing. But here's the craziest that's thing. That's a Maury. That's a Maury Povich. Povich. That I, the craziest thing about it is what, what did people expect was going to happen on that show? Right. They were accused of, of cheating. 90% of it was cheating. Mm. And they took a lie detector test. And it's like 90% of them went on there knowing full well they definitely had fucked around. They, they had to have waited. Like, I mean, at, at a certain point, they had to have waited and been like, well, I'm going to get caught. But at the same time, I get to be on TV. There's going to be snacks in the green room. My marriage is probably going to end anyway. These people weren't married, number one. And oh. number two... These people were not con men. These mm-hmm. were not like, I'm going to trick the lie detector test kind of guys. Oh, these weren't people weren't smart enough to trick or treat. No, exactly. They, they were like toothless. And it feels like the, I mean, listen, God bless these people. And I hope they're all doing well, but none of them are alive. No, it's okay. When they, when they would do the rap, when they would do the pickup shows, when they would bring them back, when they'd be like, uh, when they would say like, oh, what are they doing now? They were never doing better. They, they were never like a come to Jesus moment. Where they were just out there and their lives had turned around. They were they were living in trash cans outside of Hollywood Bowl, hoping that there was a heroin needle that was thrown in there. Yeah, like you know, they say that like you know sometimes you need to hit rock bottom to like then get yourself out. But these people, they were like born at rock bottom and just stayed there. Oh, dude, if you were on Jerry Springer, mm-hmm. you were well that maybe sub that's, rock bottom. Maybe that's why they did it. Like that was the highlight of their life was being on TV. I definitely think that that's what it was because mm-hmm. now every that's why I think that those shows really had to up the ante um, because everybody is a, is living with their phone, which is a social media show going on 24 hours a day that mm-hmm. everybody is capable of producing for themselves. Right. And so, but you do, when you notice, they were real in the beginning. I, so I was in Vegas like a few weeks ago and it happened to be out in the hotel and it was this Maury, like, you know how the TV's just on and mm-hmm. like, I, I guess I flipped the channel while I was just getting ready and it was so... These are not great actors. It's like those Judge Joe Brown shows or like those uh, Judge Judy. Yeah. It, they used to be real, but then people like figured it out that if you're going on there, you're going to get screwed. And yeah. so it felt like they didn't really have, like these are not SAG actors. Like how, how desperate do you have to be that to be in like a, a legal situation like that, that like the best recourse at this point is to be like, I'm going to go on TV where I know I'm going to get made fun of and, and I hope to get the $400 that I feel like I'm owed. That being said, I have a callback for it tomorrow. And wish me luck. All the luck in the world. Speaking of callbacks, doing talking about these uh, judge shows. Yeah. Jerry Springer had a judge show after his show recently. Judge Jerry. Oh yeah. Yeah. And he was the mayor of Cincinnati. Yeah. Originally. This, yeah. This guy did it all. Yeah. What were we saying? Oh yeah. He started. He, he did like the opposite of Trump, where he started. Yeah. As as a politician and then became a TV host. Same with uh, Obama. Well, I mean, you think about. Or he, well, he did a he did a, he did a he had a podcast. He had a nature show. Here's the crazy thing though about Jerry Springer. To me, I mean, he seemed like a nice. Wasn't he a judge on America's Got Talent or the like, host? Yeah, I guess he was the so- host. Oh yeah, like the first season or something. Right? Yeah. You know what? They brought him on. There weren't enough fights, so they got rid of him. Yeah. The, they were hoping he'd have contestants fight each well, other. Well, how did he not do get into UFC? <laughs> yes. He was in the wrong sport. Yeah. Or bum yeah. fights. Maybe that was the. Next I feel step. like he did bum fights. Yeah, for sure. How was he not a character in Mortal Kombat? You can download Jerry Springer if you do well enough in the game. Fatality. Is that your... That was also Kevin Spacey? That was my... Fatality. Yeah. So great. His energy is so low, man. That was Kevin Spacey's career? Fatality. You know, he wants babality. I rule. Oh. Oh. Um, So... Infant mortality. uh, (laughs) So, they also just announced that, um, that they're doing a prequel to Transformers... And Chris Hemsworth is going to play Optimus Prime Hilarious. in the prequel, which is kind of funny. Uh, he has, I, when we, when I was thinking the voice of, I am Optimus Prime, Autobots roll out. That's close to Chris Hemsworth. Autobots, yeah. I am Optimus Prime. Uh, it, but he sort of sounds, I think everything Chris Hemsworth says, it sounds sexual. Like he's the voice of a yeah. shake weight. Yeah. Uh, Autobots, uh, uh, roll out! I'm about to roll out all over your chest. Uh, get in. We need to get there soon. Get inside me. Uh, we, we're going to arrive quicker than possible. <laughs> the whole audience gets there. Every car is going to be leaking. I'm about to start a scream. Uh, 
oh, I'm going to really ignite your spark plugs. But that, actually, that, that, that begs the question, like, is he going to be able to get rid of his, like, bit of accent to do it? Or is it just going to be like, oh, I guess he was... Oh, fr- you he know. used to be Australian, and then yeah. he changed his accent, like Madonna when she moved to England. <laughs> right. Back on his home planet of Australia. Right. What was it called? What was the home, what was the uh, not Omicron? Yeah, <laughs> like dreads. I always said transformers sound like like fucking COVID variants. Yeah. Well, yeah. Ugh. What was that? What was that? Uh, wait, wait. What was the home? Uh, let me look it up. The the home planet in uh, transformers. In transformers. Yeah. Um, the craziest thing was so. It's funny because they robot their voices. Cybertron. Oh yes, Cy- Cybertron. We've got to get back to Cybertron. We're have cyber sex. So. <laughs> It's 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 crazy to me that he, I mean he's I I can't imagine like I don't want to see like uh, Optimus Prime, mm-hmm. the college years. Yeah, well, I mean prequels are the new sequel. I right, ex- we got to go back, but it's like back. we got to go back to go forward. Yeah, because but it's like that there. But the problem with this is obviously you and I will be there opening night and you'll be high as hell. That's one of my favorite hey, memories. Hey, come on, guy. Hey, come on, man. Come on, man. <laughs> That's my favorite thing when we went. So we go to see a lot of movies. And Seth is on edibles, and we. I'll the, partake in a little bit of very, yeah, yeah. a very legal, <laughs> very legal officer edibles. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. This, by the way, this this show does not air in uh, in, in Malaysia <laughs> or in any Asia. So I could use a good cane. male or female Asia. So the the thing is with you, we went to go see one of the Transformers movies, and you are having as good of a time as any kid is having. Talking about Transformers too. I don't remember what it that was. That was my first edibles experience. So of you're my sitting life. here and I'm in the theater and I'm watching them transform mm-hmm. and I turned and I just turned to look at you and you And you're watching me transform. I bro, your your eyes are open like the way they are in a clockwork orange mm-hmm. when they're being held open and you're like, "Oh my god, man." <laughs> I go, "What's up?" And then you go, they're transforming. <laughs> and I go, "Dude, it's the name of the movie." And you're like, no, no, you go, you go, how incredible is this? And I go, it's a crazy movie, man. But by the way, it was not a crazy part of the movie. It's like, it was like a scene of them like completing an essay it's or at the DMV. That's where they stopped at 7 Eleven to grab yeah, a snack. They were at the yeah. DMV and it was just, they were in a long line. But you were just like, they're transforming. By the way, no one else in the theater was talking. <laughs> I, I tend to talk a lot. But, but no, but literally, that was literally the first time I was ever in Unedible. Our buddy offered me some that we went with, and halfway, and we were watching it like IMAX 3D. Yeah, as always. Yeah, and halfway you through the to. movie, I was, I, I was like starting to, you know, feel very different than I'd ever had in my life. And I thought that it was the movie that was like making me feel strange. I'm like, I'm like, the IMAX 3D ness of this is like messing with my brain. And then suddenly I, I look o- the- and then I look over at our friend who had given it to me and he goes right and I'm like oh right that drugs th- drugs yeah hilarious um but my thing is I just hope that they don't that they don't because the problem with prequels are that they invent new stuff mm-hmm. and and it's like how how many of them can possibly be as good I mean they won't be they're just cash grabs soulless cash grabs that I hope mm-hmm. I get an audition for but you think about you know, like the Bible. Mm-hmm. So, because essentially Star Wars, A New Hope is the Bible. Mm-hmm. And they sort of put the other two, uh, Jedi and, and Empire, uh-huh. they're the New Testament. And the Quran. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. the Quran yeah. for our Quran listeners out there. <laughs> Quran 101. <laughs> but you got to think like, wait, you would know this. What's the Buddhist text? Uh, well, the Bhagavad Gita. Oh no, sorry. The Bhagavad Gita is is Hindu. Yeah. Um, gosh, the Buddhist. I don't know. I mean, yeah, I don't really know. I don't know. I I should know that because I consider myself like an honorary Buddhist. Yeah. Well, if only you had a, a device that helped look up immediately oh, in front sorry. of you. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> my bad, dude. My bad. My bad. What are you? What are you? Transformers? I, I'm used to knowing everything. Uh, the. Yeah, I mean the. I mean, I'm actually, I'm more of a Taoist than anything, which is Lao Tzu, the Tao Te Ching, which is, so that's my text. Buddhist, see, there, there's so many Buddhist texts. That's the thing. Like, I don't know if there's, if there is one. We're going to cut this part. Yeah. There's just like a gazillion scriptures. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the scriptures. Yeah. No. So. <laughs> the scriptures. Yes. Yeah, the, ooh, the scriptures. Yeah. Um, so this is a part of the show called Animal News with David Attenborough. Hello, welcome back to 
animal news segment on Kite Club. <laughs> Today, our top story is a shocking feral cat killing competition for children has been cancelled in New Zealand after worldwide backlash. So I just found out that there is a competition in New Zealand where kids, like Whacking Day in The Simpsons, when they would beat snakes and they would collect them as trophies, to this day, there was a competition where they would send kids out to kill feral cats and collect them like pelts, the way that they did of fallen soldiers or like the ears in Universal Soldier. This just got canceled in 2023. Oh, yeah. No, I know. It's crazy. I mean, this is like very similar to, uh, well, everything down under is like more extreme. Like, because this is their version of an Easter egg hunt. But like, we don't even hunt real eggs. We hunt plastic eggs. But don't you think that the animals that are so violent in Australia that they'll take care of the problem itself? They have spiders the size of Buicks. Yeah, you you're think so. But apparently not. Apparently the cats are out of control and now they're running things. Well, that's the only thing that you can kill. Those cats are all running everything. <laughs> those, those liberal cack cuts. <laughs> liberal cuck cats. Cuck cats. Cuck cats, cats cat. this fall. Cuck cats on Adult Swim. The craziest thing is that that this is that, that the internet's existed forever and now we're just finding out about this. Right. How did this get by? How did this get by for this song? I, by the way, I don't know um, it, how much you read about this, but the kids weren't just sent out into uh, into the bush. I don't know if they call it that in New Zealand, as they do in the Strals. They call it the landing strip. Yeah, the bush. Yeah, but I don't know if they, but they send the kids out not just with their bare hands to kill these cats because that would be like too horrible. They give the kids knives. Yeah. So like you sign up and you get a knife. You sign up. Well, yeah. I mean, you got to register. You know what's great about that? That's you got to register. That's that's their version of Dave and Buster's. <laughs> you bring enough cats, you kill right. enough cats, and you get a PlayStation get in, Five. Yeah. You, you you turn them in for tickets. Yeah, you redeem them. Um, and then also our our second story: man sentenced to eighteen months in prison for possession of over two hundred and fifty roosters used for cockfighting in Bakersfield, California. That's got to be the most Bakersfield thing I've heard of in a long time. That's very Bakersfield. I feel like uh, I feel like uh, an AI would come out with that, right? If you put into what's it called, Chat uh, GBT. GPT, yeah. If you put that into like Bakersfield animal story, that's what would pop out. I haven't spent any time in Bakersfield except for the cockfights, and I feel like what? Oh no, I was trying to remember if you and I shot something in Bakersfield one time. Where did we go? Oh, San Bernardino. San Bernardino. Right <laughs> there. Uh, eh. Yeah, you know, Bakersfield, Bakersfield, tomato, tomato. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, the so the, I think the insane thing is you pointed this out when we talked about this: the possession of over two hundred fifty roosters and eighteen months in prison. Yeah, what does that work out to mathematically? Uh, I think it's like twenty days per rooster. <laughs> it's it's it's. But I was thinking, like, you know how small towns all have those like weird laws. You like you can't walk around with ice cream in your pocket. You know, like that would be like an eighteen fifties Bakersfield law. Is that is that if you get a cock's caught, worth twenty days? Yeah, okay, you get twenty days in the pen per cock. Per cock. But that was at the time when they were trying to cut down on homosexuality. Right. Yeah. Because you get that's a get out of jail free card in West Hollywood. <laughs> right. You get rewarded with twenty days in jail. Go directly to jail. Um. So we have a new segment that we're doing on the uh, podcast called Digital Rage, and Seth was talking about. Coachella, we bo uh, we brought. I talked about it last week that I didn't go and he didn't go, but there is something that you pointed out that we were just talking about a conversation that I totally s I stand with you on this mm -hmm. that you were saying about Coachella. Yeah, yeah. Oh, just about uh, that. There has been a slew of uh, you know girls on Instagram, the gram, the gram, as we call it, the G, and uh, posting about Coachella hashtag Coachella, but they didn't go to Coachella. Now, they went to Coachella seven years ago. These are old photos. Yeah, before they were married and had two kids. And so they are using the fact that Coachella is happening now, as it does, you know, periodically, to uh, talk about, you know, what they did seven years ago, show their outfits, show what they were doing back then, because they are just dying to stay relevant in any way. Yeah. 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 It's so weird to me because it, I don't, I mean, like, I, I think that there's something cool in the moment, but to go back and look and be like, I was at this concert, people don't really do that for anything else. 
Right. Like every time the NBA finals are on, I never see people posting like th if they were at the finals. Like remember when I was there when the Lakers played the Celtics? Yeah. Or I, I played basketball one time. Yeah. Remember that? By the way, but it's not even yeah. with their friends. It's usually just them drugged up in skimpy outfits. Right. Yeah. They are, you know, it's like, it's, you know, at this point there is such men a too. <laughs> there's such, <laughs> please don't cancel us. There's such a desperation to put out content Everybody, you know, wants to be. So that's what even I, so when I was looking at my Instagram account, just in general, I realized the throwback Thursday was that kind of thing. Like and that's what you, this is. In, right. But it's yeah. like, but it's funny because, and everything, everybody should be able to do whatever the hell they want, but we're going to make fun of it. Right. But because I would do throwback Thursday for like a baby photo or like, an, you know, like the first day of two broke or something like that. But I, it's interesting to me that people, there's something about Coachella as a thing that that people like can't let go of. Mm -hmm. Like if, oh, they brought, like if you bring it up, like you're going, like let's say you and your wife are going this year. It's like you bring it up and, and there's a certain number of people around you who are like, oh, I went one time and like want to relive their experience. Do I get cool points? Yeah. yeah. That it's like, it, it, by the way, it's a funny thing, but it's not like anybody can go. It's not like you were a tribute that year. Right. You don't have to get invited. You didn't, you didn't win a contest that year. And yeah. you're like, oh, I was lucky. I was in the Coachella 100. It's like anybody can buy a fucking ticket. Right. So the idea that people are sort of like, oh, yeah, this this was that uh, lucky me. It, it, it's such a weird thing. Or or it's like. Well, it's like it's become like the early 30s female version of like a, a dude who was the quarterback in high school and hasn't done anything since. Except those quarterbacks most of the time dress exactly the way you know that old thing where people where guys tend to dress the uh, the 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 way the last year that they were cool uh -huh. that that's how they dress and that's uh -huh. how their haircut is right so yeah um, they've been fossilized in that exactly for sure so but it's funny because because you see in these Coachella it's like you don't dress like that when you see people's Coachella posts mm -hmm. you're like I haven't seen you wear fishnets um, you know as a bra in years <laughs> right. You yeah. know, uh, to catch or down here to catch your tuna. I never saw it. Everybody looks. All the girls look like extras in Waterworld. Yeah. Except coincidentally, there's no water in Coachella. It's all dry land. Yeah. It's the prequel it's to Waterworld. It's the only thing that Chris exists. Hemsworth is the prequel to Waterworld. It's Coachella. Coachella girl. Uh, uh, I've got skimpy. Uh, hashtag 07. Who's performing this year? Oh, so great. I can't even name someone who's performing in 07. No. Katy Perry, am I right? Um, you are right, Chris. Um, but you're totally am I right. right? Can someone verify? Am I right? Th that's yeah. that's the crazy. Or, or I love how people always like to tell you about how Coachella was better when they went. Yeah. That, but but they haven't been in eight years. Right. The, the experience. Everything was always. I mean, that's dude, it goes right. That's we talked uh, about it last episode. Just on brand. Just uh, completely on brand with uh, with whatever was cool for you. It's like it's like everyone who thinks uh, you know SNL. The last time SNL was funny was when they were in college. Yeah. Exactly. Right. It's like, it's generational. So, I mean, I, you know, people had a good time. God bless them. Keep posting those photos. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, I, I guess. If you went this year. Yeah. Yeah. But also it's like, by the way, we don't even say like today, if I haven't seen you before, I would not say to you in April, happy new year. Even <laughs> right. though we haven't seen each other this year. Yeah. But it's not like I make up for all the. Right, right, right. Yeah, Time exactly. The longer you've seen someone, you know, that it's been you've seen someone, you you hit on the bigger events. You don't talk about the daily stuff, but certainly by April, you just have to let go what you did on New Year's. Just, yeah. Just because you didn't see them since November. I don't want to hear what you did. Or so happy the, birthday. Right. You missed it. We're closer to my next birthday. By the it's way, okay. How, so what do you think the window is on Coachella? Coachella to like post from when the last time you went? Yeah. A, a year. <laughs> and you need to post like, oh, I couldn't make it this year. It's a shame. I had a great time last year. Oh, wow. So you're giving them that? I'll give them a year. Okay. You know what? It's a, it's a step in the right direction. It is. It is. Yeah. I say get rid of photos altogether. <laughs> all photos. Every photo. Just live the moment, bro. That's the next thing the, the left way, wants. When get I was a kid, photos. when I was a kid, we didn't even have cameras. We just had to draw. They just had caricature artists. Yeah, it was. We no. We just had a. We had a little. Um, we had a little elephant with a chisel and just going <laughs> doing the weekend. And then everyone would be like, "Can I get a picture?" And you go, "It's a living." Yeah, and a laugh track. Yeah, right. Uh, do you ever see that one? The Sims or the Simpsons? The Flintstones where they sold Winston cigarettes. No. Yo, so that they had a laugh track on that because it was it was an adult cartoon in prime time. Right. Right. And then so they were down there, and mm -hmm. the funny thing was so. 
Wilma is looking for Fred to do some work or some chores or something, mm-hmm. and he's out back with Barney smoking, and he's like, ah, Barn, this is the life. The cool, you know, Winston cigarette. And you just see Wilma looking for him, so he's avoiding <laughs> doing chores in his marriage. <laughs> and Barney's like, this is great, Fred. And they're just like back there smoking away. Would, would you say, was it so over the top that clearly Winston was... Um... That like Winston was paying them to do that. It was a commercial. Oh, sorry. I thought you were saying it was an episode. No. <laughs> oh, no, dude. Sorry. I totally missed that. It was, I thought you were saying it was an episode of the show where they're, they're smoking. Transforming, and they're like, man. That's Winston. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> they were saying they're like, that's Winston. No, they, Smooth they and cool. They do that. No, that was like a commercial a for commercial. Winston cigarettes. Got it. Okay. You know. Right. Got it. Um, but it was yeah. I, I mean, it, it was just the. So that would have been like when did they officially jump the shark? Yeah, what were they promoting at the time? Winston Fire Sticks. <laughs> <laughs> the only way I can send a smoke signal, Bon. <laughs> the cigarette just looks at yeah, it's a living. Yeah, just smoking, and then you go. I'm dying. That's my job. Well, they put it out in a turtle shell yeah. as an ashtray, and he goes, it's, it's a, a living. living. Laugh track. Wow, they really enslaved a lot of those animals. They did. Back in the day. Not anymore. No. Uh now we just kill cats. Right. Now we just kill them for entertainment. They, that's why New Zealand, it was never big there. The, they were like, yeah. or Australia, they were like, like, why are you not killing these Why animals? don't you just kill this cat? Yeah. It's ridiculous. All wouldn't even, you're using him as a dishwasher? Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. Hey, here's a knife. He's a knife. No, no, no. That's not a knife. Right. That's a knife. That's, a, that's what they do when they I give it to I know that's Australia, not New Zealand. Uh, Get out. Um, yeah. so, don't at me. New Zealand fush and chops. That was the, the one thing they say when, when you want to learn a New Zealand accent. Fush and chops instead of fish and chips. Oh, yeah. Fush and chops. So um, we got a mailbag. Thanks for sending in the questions. Uh, always send us questions. We, we want to hear from you, what you like about the show, um, what you think we can improve, uh, some of your favorite stuff. But ask us anytime. Send the questions to either my account, Jonathan Kite, on Instagram, or we have an email address at jonathankitecomedy.com or the Kite Club account on Instagram. We always love hearing from you. Thank you, everybody. We're going to try to get to as many of these as possible. The big one this week, and I brought it up, we actually had it last week, but I knew that you were going to do this. So somebody just asked me, do you remember Dimples? And so for those of you who don't know, in Southern California, so karaoke was a pretty much uh, an Asia thing. Uh, that, Hawaii thing. Yeah, but but yeah. that that was sort of right. That was that was that gained popularity and sort of the birthplace in Hawaii, right? So Pacific Islander, and it made its way to the first karaoke bar in Southern California was Dimples in Burbank, and it was crazy because when we first moved here, it was sort of like a dive bar, but everybody hung out there. And you would you would not be surprised to see a crazy amount of characters from either film or television just hanging out. It was the diviest of dives, dude. It was insane. Like, it and was they, like if Twin Peaks opened a bar. Well, they, they had, had they, they had props. It looked like it looked like a bar mitzvah. Like they had inflatable guitars and like weird wigs and sunglasses. Obviously, everybody's putting this on before. This was before COVID and before lice, apparently. And people were just wearing costumes to sing Living on a Prayer or whatever. And you'd get up on this ridiculous makeshift stage. It looked like a it looked like a community theater production of the of where they sell the girls in Taken. <laughs> it was just like up. It was like really gross. And I remember that we saw the principal, Mr. Belding from yeah. Saved by the Bell. Yeah, Dennis ha- I, it's Hastings. Not Hastings, yeah, Hastings. Yeah. Not not Hastard. Hastings, yeah. So he would just hang out there. Oh yeah, he was a regular dude. Dude, he yeah, he was uh I feel like he 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 was like Alec Baldwin from Beetlejuice. He couldn't leave that bar. Haskins. Haskins, yeah, uh, yeah. So yeah. he couldn't leave that bar for fear of sandworms. Yeah. Dude, he was he was, cursed tra- to he was in trapped that bar. in that bar. He was stapled on the bar stool. And it was and it was right there because it was near the Warner Brothers studio and a lot of those old staples of the Hollywood culture that were there. And so someone just asked, like, do you remember Dimples? I mean, holy crap that I spend a lot of my 20s in Dimples. Yeah, fun fact that you actually touched upon, it's even more than that. It wasn't just the first karaoke bar in Southern California. It was the first karaoke bar in America. Oh, sorry, that's exactly right. That's what I meant. Crazy. Sorry, yeah, because it made its way over here. It was the first karaoke yeah. bar. And then it was on Bar Rescue, and oh, then it was yeah. shut down. And then it was shut down. And then it was shut down. Which ended up to Bar Rescue getting shut down, because clearly they weren't doing a good job. But, but nobody could have rescued that. Yeah, no that was rescue a, bar rescue. Bro, 
That well, bar- <laughs> they even tried with Bar Rescue Rescue. Did you see that show where yeah. they tried to rescue Bar Rescue? Yeah, Inception. Didn't work. That I will tell you, that Bar Rescue, that was like dimples was made of drowning men. <laughs> there was, you couldn't yeah. rescue at all. Yeah, and drowning dreams. The best part about uh, dimples is that... Uh, whatever What's the sound system. Whatever crazy time you had there, drunken crazy time that you definitely would not remember the next day is okay because it was Sorry. memorialized on a DVD that you were given when you perform so that you could prove And to a everyone. photo. Oh yeah, and a photo. I do not have it from the you were supposed to get it from the first time you went, but it was so rare that I would go. I'd go like once every two or three years that they didn't know me, so I would always get it as if because they figured it was my first time there. They couldn't recognize you though in all those costumes. Right. <laughs> yeah. It, it looked right. like a, it was like an episode of the or a Pink Panther sequel my wife or a still, prequel. My wife still has starring hers. Chris Hemsworth <laughs> as Inspector Clouseau. <laughs> yeah, your your wife still has. She still has her picture and her and her DVD. I mean, it was insane. Yeah. But somebody was just like, "Do you remember this bar?" <laughs> it's one. Of, it's one of the first bars we went to when we first moved to LA within our first few days. Well, that people. So to me, when we were first moving out here, uh, American Idol was the hottest thing in the world. And mm-hmm. people were really thinking that they were going to get discovered in these karaoke bars. Including us. And we still might. So what was the other big one? Uh, Sardo's, which oh, was Sardo's, porn yeah. star karaoke. Porn star karaoke Tuesday on nights. On Tuesday nights that we would go and hang out with a good buddy of ours, Marty Barrett, mm-hmm. and who was a porn... He was a, uh, a, a... A porn journalist. Journalist, yeah. Yeah. And so he would write reviews... Um, he once, he once um, gave me as a favor, because I had done something nice for him, he gave me a huge box full of porn DVDs. And he's like, here you go, man. Just This is my way of saying thanks. And he goes, careful, one of them's gay. But you I'm know like, what's oh, great thanks, about that? Man. That thanks felt like the, the ring. <laughs> if you don't give that box away to somebody else within 10 days, within, yeah, yeah you're, then you're doomed to live at dimples. <laughs> Dennis, That's why Belding is there. Yeah, Belding couldn't do there. He was yeah. not saved by the bell. So... The uh, not saved by the bell, the Dennis Hastings story. So, um, no, but Haskins. The, Haskins. No, I'm, I'm talking about a different guy. No, no, I'm talking, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm talking about Dennis Hastings. Yeah. So, the um, the crazy thing was, so there was also Brass Monkey. There was all these, but I really yeah. felt like Monkey's Bur- still around. They're still killing yeah, crushing it, it in K Town. I really felt like though that Burbank was the karaoke capital, mm-hmm. and maybe it wasn't, but it just felt like every place had karaoke. Yeah. The way that like the stand up boom happened, it was like every. Every bodega was like had a, had a, like an open mic night. Yeah. Well, I often describe stand up as like it's such a weird business that the only way that you can come up in stand up is by at the at at the start is by doing open mics, which are like it's full of like all the riffraff, like people who are just there to like get stage time and like get over you know get over stage fright and. And I equate it to, it's as if the only way to make it in the music industry was if you had to go to karaoke nights. Well, people were getting discovered. So when, mm-hmm. when Katie Hines came out here. Oh, our friend Katie. Katie. So she was from Alabama and she said, where do people go? I'm just curious. You know, she's a great singer, incredible singer. So I go, you know, I've heard that there's a bunch of um, karaoke places around here, but a big one is Brass Monkey. Mm-hmm. So her and I actually went there. She sang, we sang One Sweet Day, Boys to Men, she did Mariah Carey. And actually P. Diddy had a scout who was there that day and she got an audition because of it. That's cool. So I it know. was happening. Like people mm-hmm. were looking for all this, un, you know, assigned talent in the world. It's just n- never at Dimples. Yeah. Yeah. I ran a karaoke for a while. Remember that? Like You did run a karaoke. 12 years ago. Yeah, for like five uh, months. Yeah, our buddy Jake hooked me up. Stop reminding it. me. Yeah, in this in this uh, this spot out in uh, way out in the Springbok in the boonies. No, no, I wish. Oh no! Yeah, it Hold was on. at Paladinos, which is a great venue for bands. Not like Paladinos. Yeah, wow, I know, that, right? That it really takes you back. And it was this big space, but no one would show up for karaoke. Like there are places that karaoke people go to do karaoke. This was not that place. This was a place for the same five people who go to Paladinos every night of their life. I visited you. This is what it felt like. Oh. It felt like that the karaoke was inconveniencing their sadness. Yeah. The place was all mirrors, so you couldn't get away from your hangdog face. It was literally like getting hammered yeah. in, in a fun house, but there was no fun. <laughs> And the back room with a karaoke was so big, 
it felt like a party that no one had RSVP'd for. Yeah, it was made for bands. It I mean, was and they so... have big bands come in and play there. Yeah. But but during but on Monday nights when I ran it, it was just the five barflies in the bar room, which was a different room. I would call them up one by one. They'd come up and sing their song to no one. They would sing their song to me standing on the side with my laptop running the song. And then they'd go back in the bar and finish. You know, like drink. a video store where like they used to have in the old days video store, people like, what's that? Google it. But there'd be like a there'd be like a beaded curtain back room where you'd go for the porn. <laughs> Like right. you'd feel you'd, you'd be okay to be back there as long as you got in there. It's like going into a, a pool, like a, a body of water. Your body would adjust, but you were always sort of like, I don't want to go back to the porn place. You don't know what those beads are covered in. You know, are those anal beads? So that's what Paladinos felt like. Yeah. Like like the bar had pool tables. Had it was like a classy dive bar, and and then you'd go back there and you're like, oh, I don't really want to go back there. And like you sort of your body would warm up and you'd be like, I guess this is us today. But you definitely get a penicillin shot when you left that bar. Oh my god, just to be safe. Yeah. Yeah, just yeah. be smart. By the way, that feels like a place they should have been giving out COVID vaccines. <laughs> yeah. You know, we had a, uh, there was a, there was a deaf guy. Oh, yeah. I was waiting for you to bring it up. Cause I couldn't. <laughs> yeah. There was a deaf guy. He was one of the what was five his name? regulars. Uh, his name was uh, tiger G. In fact, years later when I went there for, to do a stand up show, he was still there. Yeah. Doing and, karaoke. Yeah. Doing karaoke. I'm like, no, not tonight, for, man. For the stand up. He, he did not. He care. just came up to you, gave you a song. Yeah. You're like, dude, I'm let not. go. Let go. Well, um, Okay, so uh, we're running out of time. We're going to cut it short. I just want to give socials real quick, and then we're going to do our last segment. So where can the people find you? Uh, on Twitter, at Seth Shapiro. On Instagram, at the Seth Shapiro. And obviously, as I said before, please like, uh, subscribe. We're on everywhere you get your podcasts. We drop the YouTube new episodes every Thursday. The socials are Jonathan Kite and Kite Club Podcast for everything. We're going to end the show like we always do with the oy vey of the day. And uh, do you have an oy vey of the day? No, I don't have an oy vey, man. You got an oy vey? So, man? the sampling, I don't know why I became Sebastian. Okay. This, let me, the sampling, okay, in this country is getting out of control, okay? Ice cream, people that sample is, is nuts. You're wasting everyone's fucking time, okay? I, like, and it's always, not always, because we don't want to, you know, it's always white women. And they're going, what's that flavor? Vanilla? What's that one called? Vanilla? And they go to try it. Oh, you know what? I need another. This woman the other day had, she tried eight flavors. And then she got a flavor that she didn't try. It was taking up everyone's time. I guarantee you, she already knew the flavor she wanted. So that's why oh, she did the samples. Is she's like, well, it's, it'll be my only chance to try those. Of course. Yeah. But it's getting out of control because the pokey place that I go to, people are mm -hmm. now sampling all the sides and it looked like a fucking, uh, an allergy scratch test. There was like little thimbles uh -huh. and he, the guy had 16 of them for the order. Oh my God. It's dude. too many. It's too many. Dude, There's I mean, too much freedom in this country. You know how I've I, said it before and I'll say it again. You know how you know that it's too many is that the places have policies. They have a sign like how many per person. The ice cream places have, they say, please only two samples per customer. Or three, but that they don't, but you can't say that. They're not going to say that to someone's face. But it means that they, but it means that they had that talk at corporate. They were like, look, we are losing way too much money on these samples. Like I know it's a loss leader, but like we're, but it's actually taking a hit to our profit now. We need to do something about this. The, or the craziest thing is. That they they want to have a conversation with them about the flavor, mm -hmm. about it. They don't do any research whatsoever. This it's, is like the ooh. This is like when I went to Nepal. I, I to wasn't Nepal, with you, Joanne. Well, if you check my Instagram, oh, it was right after Coachella. Coachella picks. Yeah, this has been Kai Club. <laughs>